Today's lesson is called Solving Problems Day 1. So we'll start with problem number one. Two consecutive even integers have a sum of 26. What are the two integers? So sum means we're going to end up adding even integers, consecutive even integers. That means that we have to have even numbers that comes consecutively or in a row. So an example of this would maybe be 8, 10. There's two consecutive even integers as an example. So we have two methods we're going to show you. One is using a tape diagram, which you're going to recognize from using in grades previous. And method two is what we're going to concentrate on more now that you're in algebra, which is solving algebraically. You can use either method. You can use a combination of the methods, but everyone should be able to use method two absolutely to solve problems like this because most questions will ask you to solve it algebraically. So with method one, it says using a tape diagram. I'm going to draw my first bar, which is my first consecutive number. And then I'll make my second bar the same size, second consecutive number. But remember, it's even, so we have to take and add two pieces here to show the consecutive even part of it. So it's just two units larger than the first consecutive number. And these together add to 26. So we know we have the two bars, which are our unknown units. So two units plus the two pieces we added to the second consecutive number to make it the next even consecutive number for a total of 26. Which means if I were to subtract two from both sides, I know two units would be worth 24 and therefore one unit would be 12. So now I know from my answer, my first consecutive even number would be 12. And when I add two to that, my second consecutive even number would be 14. So now let's look at what that looks like algebraically. I like to look at the bars as our let statement. So whenever we're setting up an equation algebraically, we need to make sure we have a let statement stating what variable we're using and what it stands for. Minimally, you should have let x equal the first consecutive even number. Now that's all you technically have to have, but I would highly, highly suggest that if you're dealing with multiple numbers, multiple people in a question, anything like that, that you write as many let statements as you can. Because if you do them in partial chunks like this, it will make the equation so much easier to write. So I'm also going to write a let statement for the second consecutive even integer. And if you look at the bar diagram, remember, it's the first one, the first consecutive number, but then adding two to it because it's even. So x plus two would be our second consecutive even number. So now we have a sum of 26. So I would take x and also add it to x plus two to get a total of 26. Now we would use our solving equations, steps as always. We would look for distributive, we don't have it. Next, we look for like terms. We have like terms on the left. X and X makes two X plus two equals 26. We would look for variables on both sides, which we do not have. Then we would go into undoing addition or subtraction. So I'm gonna get rid of the two by subtracting two from both sides. And I get two X equals 24. So to get X alone, I'd have to divide by two and I get X equals 12, which you're gonna notice is similar to what you had before. And then the X plus two would be 12 plus two, which would be 14. So my answer is still 12 and 14. Now you're going to notice we're not checking these the way we usually do. When you check, you have to make sure that you're going back to the original word problem and doing some mental math using your calculator to make sure that your answers make sense. For example, if we got 13 and 15, that would be a red flag that we were incorrect because we're supposed to have two consecutive even integers. Um, so I would take those numbers and say, okay, they were supposed to have a sum of 26. Do they? Yes, they do. We've done it correctly. So as a follow-up, which problem solution, the one with a tape diagram or the one with an equation was easier to set up and solve? Why? So I just want you to think about that for yourself. That's a question you want to ask yourself. Is something to, using a tape diagram something that's helpful to you or not? 
Really, this is going to be what's going to, you want to pick whatever's going to make you successful. Okay. All right. Now, problem two it says in a school choir, half of the members were girls. At the end of the year, three boys left the choir and the ratio of boys to girls became three to four. How many boys remained in the choir? Okay. So we have to think about setting up a ratio, which means we're going to have some fractions, which means we're probably going to need to use some type of proportion. It says, in a school choir, half the members were girls. At the end of the year, three boys were left, and then they're talking about the ratio of boys to girls. And then the question right here is how many boys remain in the choir? So since everything is heavily talked about in boys, that's what we're going to use our let statements for. We're going to say let b equal the number of boys and now we have to think about where, because there's three kind of separate sections in here about the scenarios with the number of people in choir. So we're going to let B be the number of boys to start. There's a certain number of boys to start. Then we know at the end of the year, three boys left. So that means the number of boys we had, minus three, is our number of boys at the end. And then we still have this third part, which is how many girls are there? Now, the problem with this is that a lot of people say, okay, well, we'll come, we'll come up with another variable for the girls. We cannot do that if we're writing one equation to find the variable. One variable, one equation. Two different variables, two equations, and then we're getting into a system. So we have to stick with B and think about how we would represent the girls in the same way. Well, this is how it's going to work. In a school choir right here, it says half of the members were girls. And we said B represented the number of boys to start. So if they were evenly split in half, that means B also represents the number of girls to start. So now they said they want us to set up a ratio because it says the ratio of boys to girls became three to four. And that was at the end of the year. So we want to use our end of the year numbers. Okay, so boys to girls. Notice it says boys first, girls second, and then three first and four seconds. So you want to keep them in that perspective order. So the boys at the end of the year were B minus three. The girls at the end of the year are the same as the girls were at the start. No girls left the choir. So B, really, this is the start and the end. Okay, then on the other side, we have three to four. That was the way the ratio was given to us. Okay, so now we're going to cross multiply. And we have 3 times b. And on the other side, we have 4 times b minus 3. So we'll go through our steps. We have distributive property. So we have 3b equals 4 times b is 4b. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Then this is an equation that I like to call lopsided. It doesn't make sense to move the 3b because then everything will be on the right and nothing on the left. So we're going to get rid of the 4b since it's the side with more stuff. And this is negative b equals negative 12. That means there's really a negative 1 in front of that b. So we would divide both sides by negative 1 and get that b is 12. So they wanted to know how many boys remained in the choir. So that's b minus 3, which would, which would be 9. So now we have 9 boys that we know were remaining. Okay. Now you could go ahead and do a, a bar diagram for that if you're interested and try to see if you can get the same response. For problem number 3, Jim tells you he paid a total of $23,078.90 for a car. And you would like to know the price of the car before sales tax so that you can compare the price of that model of car at various dealers. Using an equation, find the price of the car before sales tax if Jim bought the car in Arizona where the sales tax is 6.6%. Okay, so again, where's, what's our question? Find the price of the car before sales tax. So that's our let statement. We're going to let X equal the price of the car before tax. Now, if you think about how tax works, you buy something at the store, you go up, they scan the price tag, and then when you go to pay for it, you pay a percentage of that price in addition to the price of the item. 
okay? So we have the price of the car, which is X, but we also have to, in addition, pay the tax on that car. So 6.6%, .6%, we need to change to a decimal. So remember, you move it two to the left and you get 0 0.066. So we are going to say 0 0.066 times the price of the car. Remember, it's a percentage of the price. And that should be a total of $23,078.90. So if we go through our steps, no distributive, but we do have like terms over here. So this becomes 1.066x equals $23,078.90. No variables on both sides, no addition or subtraction, but we do have multiplication we need to undo. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1.066. When I do that, I get a total of 21650 So the price of the car before tax was $21,650. $21, so lastly, I would like you to try out the total age problem. Now, this can be a challenge. Okay, so you do the best you can, try it on your own, and then when you're ready, you can resume the video to find out the answer. Okay. The total age of a woman and her son is 51 years. Three years ago, the woman was eight times as old as her son. How old is her son now? So you could use in a tape diagram or set up an equation to figure this out. So question is, how old is the son now? So I'm going to let X equal the son's age. Now it says the total age of a woman and her son is 51. So that means, let's say the son is 10, that would mean the woman is 41, right? Because they have to have a total of 51 years. So the way you wanna do that is exactly what I just did in my head. Think of different number scenarios to figure out what's going on, okay? So if the total is 51 and you know the son is 10, wouldn't you do 51 minus 10 to figure out the mom or the woman's age? So that's exactly what we're going to write as our let statement. The total minus however old the son is, is going to be the woman's age. So you're noticing again, I wrote two let statements to come up with that first to make my equation easier. So that was my let statement. Now we're going to get into what's going to be used to write the equation. Three years ago, the woman was eight times as old as her son. Think of was or is any of those words as your equal sign. Okay, so think about that as your equal sign. So my equal sign is there. On the left-hand side, it says three years ago, the woman. Well, the woman right now is 51 minus X years old. Three years ago means I have to subtract her age by three to figure out what she was three years ago. On the other side, it says eight times as old as her son. Now remember, this is still three years ago. So the son right now is X years old, but three years ago, we would have to subtract three from his age and then multiply it by eight. So there's the equation I have that we need to solve. So if I use distributive property, and technically the way I wrote this, you would be distributing a one, but it's 51 minus X minus three, equals 8 times x is 8x, and 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. Then you would look for like terms. On the left-hand side, we have a 51 and a negative 3 that we can combine. So we get 48 minus x equals 8x minus 24. Next, we would have variables on both sides. So I'm going to get rid of the smaller one by adding x. Whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I get 48 equals 9x minus 24. Then I would get rid of 24 by adding 24 to both sides. So I get 72 equals 9x, so these are gone. And then I would divide by 9, and x is equal to 8. So when they asked me how old is her son now, that was x. So I've already found my answer. He's 8 years old. Now you could also set up a um, tape diagram for something like this if you wanted to. Um, if that's something you're interested in, you could always set that up to try to help you figure out this question. But again, ultimately you do need to be able to solve this algebraically. 
And that concludes our lesson on solving problems day one.